Experiment 5 is about fissure esterification. Esters are important group of molecules responsible for naturally occurring flavors and scents. Fissure esterification is a synthetic method to prepare esters that involve acid-catalyzed reaction of a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. Inorganic acid commonly used is concentrated sulfuric acid, H2SO4. An alternative catalyst is a sulfonated polystyrene resin called DAWEX, which is an acid functionalized polymer that is safer to handle, easily removed, and can be regenerated, hence recyclable. This catalyst is an application of green chemistry principles. So this is now the setup for the experiment, the micro kit, which I have in here. And then I took out um, a round bottom flask, which I now have in here. So this is the RBF. And then I also have the setup for the um, sand bath. This is the thermal well with the sand. And I also have the thermometer. The sand bath is attached to the transformer. And I set it to 70. Transformer is plugged directly to the outlet. So the temperature right now is around 145. So I think we're ready to um, put the components in here. And then I have the acidic acid. This is the uh, glacial acidic acid. And then I also have the alcohol, which we label typically as an unknown. This is unknown one. So we are going to determine the identity of the unknown alcohol once we make the ester. I measured about 1.2 ml of the acidic acid and then from the table that I've shown you in the handout, I approximately determined the amount of alcohol which is about um, stoichiometric amount, 1 is to 1 ratio of the alcohol, of the corresponding alcohol and I'm going to add about 2 ml, approximately 2 ml of the alcohol in here. So I'm just going to measure using using a pipette so this measures one mil so i'm just going to measure two of these using um, this graduated pipette so this is the alcohol And I'm also going to add, um, so I just added one mil, and I'm also going to add the DAWEX. So the catalyst is called DAWEX. This is actually a resin. So I already measured uh, approximately 0.4, so right now the weight is 0.396 grams of the DAWEX. So I zeroed the weighing boat, the plastic weighing boat, and then DAWEX is now inside. And this is the catalyst. So if I take this out, so it's uh, it's like beads. You can see it's like beads, um, yellowish in color. So this is the resin, and it's a cationic resin. So it has hydrogen in it as a catalyst. So now I'm just going to add the DAWEX into our mixture and now it's inside and I'm going to add the remainder of the of the alcohol and then I want to rinse out the side
So the temperature right now is around close to 148, 147. So I think we're ready to um, reflux. And I'm going to put it out. And then I'm going to take out from the uh, micro kit this uh, air condenser. And I'm going to use the adapter. So it should snap and then I'm also going to snap it top. okay so then I'm going to now reflux it I have the flask sitting on the sand bath and I don't want it to be popping so much the temperature right now is close to 150 so I'm just putting it right on top so it's not popping and this would act as a condenser so that I'm not um, drying the solution. So right now I'm stirring it so that it mixes, the solution would mix. And right now we have three things in here, the alcohol, the acidic acid, and then the catalyst, which is the resin. So I can measure the temperature so that I know that I'm not heating it too much, otherwise it might dry up. And I want it to be approximately 140. So right now I'm stirring it and I have the solution in here, again, it's just three components, the alcohol that I added, the unknown alcohol, the acidic acid, and then the Dawex. And right now the temperature is about 138, and I set the transformer to 55. So we're going to time it now for 20 minutes of refluxing. So basically we are boiling the solution so that we make the ester. So right now, I, I've been boiling it for about 10 minutes, and you can see the big bubbles. It's popping a little bit, but it's okay. The vapor is not going up. The air condensers, it's way down here. So you can see the reflux, by the way, um, of the vapor coming up and then going down. And then the temperature right now is about 146. So you can see the big bubbles when I when I'm stirring it and then so we want it to boil so the air condenser acts as a coolant so it's not gonna dry up and uh, the cold air cools the vapors so it will go down back into the uh, go down back into the uh, reaction mixture. So it's been 20 minutes since I started refluxing and you can still see the bubbles in here. And again, the evaporation is just around here and then it's going down, so that's the reflux. And then right now the temperature is around 142, which is just right. So now I'm going to disassemble the top one, which is the air condenser. So right now I'm going to raise this up. I will take out the air condenser from the micro kit. I'm going to attach already. This is a distillation head. And then this is a thermometer again. So basically I'm going to replace the air condenser with this and we are going to distill now the, the um, ester. So this is a partial kind of purification we want to isolate the ester, so it's basically by boiling point. We also want to not take the Dawex, we want the Dawex to remain in the, in the flask.
So right now, I assembled the distillation setup, and I took out the air condenser, and I attached a, uh, uh, an adapter, and I also have the thermometer. Right now, it actually started to distill, and I'm now going to put the aluminum foil so that I can contain the heat, and then the reflux should be, should go faster. It's bumping a little bit, but it's okay because this just basically a partial uh, purification. So I'm just going to enclose it so that I can control the heating more using aluminum foil. So this is the distillation after about 20 minutes of distilling it. I isolated a low boiling component and you can see that there's like a blob at the bottom and uh, that's the water that comes out and one of the product, one of the byproduct of esterification is water. So although some of this actually is the esters, I'm going to collect that one too. But I now have enough sample for us to analyze. So I have here the distillate. So this is the distillate and it's almost done. So if you look at the residue, it's almost down to the bottom. So I'm going to stop it now. Okay. So it's done. So I'm going to turn it off, turn off everything, including the transformer. So I'm now going to disassemble and I'm go now going to do the next step. So I transferred the distillate into the uh, conical tube using a pipette and I did not really combine the original, the first fractions. Although when you waft it towards your nose, it actually smells like ester, but I just want to get the, the higher boiling component, which actually distilled at about 90 degrees C. So now I'm going to wash this. And this is now the sodium uh, bicarbonate to get rid of any acid or acidic acid that actually co-distilled. So I'm just going to add 2 ml of the sodium bicarbonate solution, aqueous 5%. So I'm going to use this to pipe it up and down and to shake it. So there's some fizzing going on. So now it's stopped. So the sodium bicarb bicarbonate is um, basic. Now if there's any acid, it will actually neutralize it, any acidic acid. So now you have two layers an organic layer and a lower layer. Um, because the density of the ester is actually less than the density of water, because I added aqueous sodium bicarb, so the um, my ester is gonna be the top layer. You can see there's a layer. You can see some layer, okay? So the top layer is going to be my uh, ester. So I can take out the bottom one by using the pipette. Okay. So in case I'm not sure, I can actually not put it in the sink yet. So... I took out the bottom by using the pipette. Okay. So there's still a layer in here. So I can use... So because it's still phasing, so I'm going to add more sodium bicarb and wash it one more time.
So you can see that I know that it's the lower layer because it's going to go down. So the wash is the lower layer. So I took a different pipette. This is a disposable glass pipette, pasture pipette, and then I put a bulb. And this is longer, so I want it longer because I want to take out the lower layer. So as you can see, there's a layer. Okay. So there's a layer that I want to get rid of. That was the wash. So I want to use this long pipette and I'm getting rid of the bottom so I put it all the way to the bottom so if you can see I put it I press the bulb so that I'm not sucking the the upper layer I want the lower layer out so I put it all the way down and I'm now taking out getting rid of the lower layer so I took that out so, so it's the same wash as before and then now I press the bulb and then again I put it all the way down to the bottom of the conical tube and then I'm getting rid of the the lower layer okay so I still have a tiny bit so I'm gonna Okay, so out, and now I'm now going to do the next step. So I'm done with the base wash, which is the sodium bicarbonate, and I'm now going to use 15% uh, NaCl. I want a salt because it's like a salting out effect. And again, to wash again, but I want salt because in case, if it's just water, sometimes if it's not ionic enough, you will not see the layers. I want uh, I want a salt solution, which is just brine and sodium chloride. And I'm going to add again two mils. So this is just NaCl. So approximately two mils. And then I'm going to use this pipette to pipe it up and down. And then just to mix it up. So I don't want to vigorously shake it, otherwise sometimes it forms an emulsion. So I don't see any more bubbling. Uh, that means that, well, it's just a salt this time. So now, I'm now going to let it settle for a while, and then I'm going to get rid of the lower layer again. So I'm getting rid of the lower layer, which is actually just the brine solution. So you can see that there is a layer. If you look, there's a layer. So I'm getting rid of the lower layer.
okay? If there's like few droplets of water, we can get rid of it. Uh, we want, we don't want water because it will interfere with the IR that we're going to be doing. So now I'm going to add uh, sodium sulfate. So this is anhydrous sodium sulfate. It's a drying agent. So we want any water that's still in here will be absorbed in the by the sodium sulfate and we're gonna get mainly just the ester. So I'm just gonna scoop and then let it sit for a minute or two. And then I'll cap it. Right now it's clear. So the water is at the bottom actually as it got absorbed. And then we're just going to let it sit and we're going to put the, the liquid into that tear vial. And then we'll weigh it and then we're going to run the IR. So I'm just letting it soak so that we don't have any water. So right now it's clear and let it sit for a minute. This is the tear weight of the um, vial with a cap and right now the weight empty is 15.028 grams. So I let the sodium sulfate absorb the water in the conical tube. So I have the conical tube in here and I'm now going to pipette the uh, liquid, the ester into the tear um, the pre-weighed vial with a cap. So I'm now going to uh, take it out. So I will take out the liquid. Uh, now taking out the liquid. Slowly so that I don't disturb the um, sodium sulfate. That's the most I can get out of that tube, and we're now going to weigh this. We are now weighing the vial with the liquid ester, and right now the weight is 15.682 grams. You're going to subtract the weight of the vial and the cap from this weight. So the weight was now is 15.682 grams, and then the Weight of the vial in the cap was 15.028 grams. So you get the weight of the ester. So we are now taking the IR of the sample and I'm going to add a drop into that ATR plate. So just a drop of the sample and then I'm going to now press it with the ATR pressure tower and then we are now running the sample. So, so in the IR machine we are now running the sample. This is now our sample and I'm now going to just label it. So fine peaks, full scale. Actually I'm just going to save it. Save as TIFF Esther sample 
And the feature that I want to show is actually how to do a um, library search. We are going to select Analyze over here, and then we are going to do um, Library Setup, and then we are going to put in Esther's, add it on the right side, and OK. We are going to go back to Analyze here and then do a search. So basically, this is a match. So if you look down here, that gives you the top one over here in red is the sample. So in the library search, the top one is uh, the sample in red. And then the purple one is the match in the library. So you can now identify this is our ester. So now you can figure out going backwards what is the alcohol. So I'm going to print this out. Print, file, print. Okay, and then I will also do save as. And then I will do match, IR sample match. So this is now the IR. The first one, as I mentioned, this is basically our sample. The second one is the match in the library, uh, which is um, a software that comes with the instrument. So depending on what is available, it can give you a match. So that is our, that is the identity of our Esther.